you try to write a good part for a man and a good part for a woman? And it's maybe a rare movie business. But, um, you know, The Big Blue was about the, the friendship of two men. Um, the Last Combat was about three men. So there's also a lot of uh, Leon called Leon, not Matilda. So it's about a man who meet a young girl, but the film is about this guy. So she was very tough. She was uh, pretty good, not very tough. Life was tough for her, but she was not tough. No, I, I just tried to do my best to write good things for women and good things for men. And it's true that in the 80s, uh, the cinema was just about the man, you know, big muscles, a stylist, a baby. <laughs> and then on the back there's this girl crying, when are you coming back? Uh, that's not my vision of, of women. <laughs> I think I'm impressed by the, the weakness of men and the strength of women. When we, you know, Achilles, Without his, uh, how do you say, the uh, How do you say it? Yeah. 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 So a shield without it is, is nothing. I mean, there's no story. It's just a guy with a dress. That's it. It's interesting because of that, because he has a weakness. So, men's are interesting when they have a weakness, not when they are strong. I see so women, women, women it's, it's kind of the opposite. When you see Ansan Suchi, this little 45 kilos woman who fight against 200,000 militaries with no weapon, and she wins. It's amazing. У вас в фильмах всегда снимались э, совершенно потрясающие женщины и актрисы, которых вы показывали с э, какой-то новой, необычной стороны. Вот скажите, э, а, с какой-то новой, необычной стороны, как вы выбираете себе муз? И самое главное, есть ли у этих замечательных женщин и актрис нечто общее, помимо, естественно, красоты и таланта? Спасибо. Let's put it in order. You have a script first, and you have a character, and the game is to find the best actress or the best actor to play the part. And sometimes I, I met actors and I, I love them, and I, but I don't feel they're good for the part, and maybe for another film. But it, it, it's just a meeting to meet and say, can this person can be this character? And that's the only motivation, in fact. Пожалуйста, следующий вопрос. Добрый день, Люк. Меня зовут Сергей Айпин, независимый кинокритик. У меня к вам вопрос как к сценаристу. Люси, получив безграничные практические возможности, могла там, попробовать остановить все войны на Земле или изобрести вечный двигатель, или наладить связь человечества с планетной цивилизацией. Тем не менее, вы выбрали такой достаточно драматический дел для своей главной героини. А в связи с чем вопрос, почему так означает ли, что развитие умственных способностей непременно ведет к потере человечества? Why God doesn't stop war? You say. No, I'm not saying I asked the question. So why Lucy will, you know, have, have to, to do it? it? It's about what she learned is the only real purpose of life is to pass it on. Because that's what our cells are doing. They learn something, they pass it on to the next one. And there's no judgment about it. So that's what she's doing. She understands that the main 
concern, the main purpose of life is not to do something with it. It's just to pass it on, to give it to, to another one. And she respect that. So when you want to stop war or do these kind of thing, it's because your morality, the way you train, push you to do that. I am the good person or I am the bad person. She's not in deciding who is good and who is bad. She just learns and pass it on. And that's what we should do. Добрый день, доброе утро. Здравствуйте. Добрый доброе утро. Ю. Мерси, что вы приехали в Москву. Мы вас очень ждали. Всем очень доброе этого утра. Программа Активная жизнь меня зовут Анзоль. Когда мы вас ждали, мы а, видели а, съемки бэкстейдж а, с, а, с девчонкой площадки вашего фильма. А, и знаете, одну интересную деталь. Вы снимаете по принципу вот на выдумку хитра. В клубах мы видели с очень примотанная елочная гирлянда, а, кетчуп вместо крови, а, вместо лиц мы видим тележку практически деревянную. Или это и есть европейский Голливуд? Или, возможно, весь бюджет ушел в Бордну, в Фримону и э, Скарлетт? Да нет, настоящий кровь должна быть, конечно. Спасибо. No, I don't remember. But um, sometimes they were funny. Sometimes they, you can see they smile because it's not the truth, but you're not far. So they smile and they say, yeah, okay, maybe you can say that. And sometimes they look you very hard and say, no, no, you can't say that. And you almost offend them. <laughs> No, but it was very, it, it's, a, it's still a film, so there's true things in the film, and there's things who are uh, wrong, fake, and I know it, of course. But it's good to have these guys to guide you to, to limit the field, you know. It's funny because um, you basically have uh, uh, four steps. The first one is control of yourself, control of the others, control of the matter, and control of time. Uh, the first one, they have no problem. They, they think it's true. The second one, either. They think that, you know, if we use our brain more cleverly, we, we can control the others, which is scary. Uh, control of matter, they start to... <laughs> and control of time, they were speechless. <laughs> but, uh, the way the scientist works is 
to, to they have to prove something before to say it's right. But when they when they working with someone with imagination, they kind of lost because it's not the way they work. They need to prove every little detail. But if suddenly if you said what about this, they cannot prove that it's not possible. So they are very embarrassed. And it, it, it's very funny um, to work with them. But when you talk about love, for example, they say, oh yeah, love is a chemical reaction. We can explain it. And suddenly you, you, you think about your entire life, and it's just a chemical reaction, and, and it's scary, and you're totally depressed. Еще я, с вашего позволения, еще один вопрос задам господину Бессону. В фильме, когда показывается поезд, который движется с огромной скоростью, достаточно популярно излагается теория относительности Эйнштейна. Я хотел Люка спросить, как у него в школе было с физикой, и перечитывал ли он Эйнштейна, когда готовился к съемкам фильма «Люси». Uh, I wasn't bad in school. <laughs> I think we should work first and study later when we're older. It will, be, it will make more sense, in fact, because they try to interest you with history when you're 11 years old. You, you don't care, you know? You have no future, and you're talking about your future, and they talk about your past, and you're not concerned about it. The only uh, matter where I was good at school is when the professor was good and he knows how to make his matter interesting. Uh, one, one year I have a very good teacher in physics, so I was very good this year. <laughs> and it, it's, it always goes, for me it always goes with the teacher. When the teacher loves his matter, uh, I was concerned and I was listening and I was pretty good. But when they were just doing the job, I was not interested at all. The problem in school, in fact, is the school where I was, they do a, a show every trimester. And I was writing the shows. And it takes me three months to prep the shows. So I was uh, no time to work at school.